Hello and welcome to another Planet Destiny exotic weapon review. Today we are finally taking another look at Hawkmoon. It's been well over a year since my initial review on it and, as well as other hand cannons in general, have gone through quite a few changes since then. So let's go ahead and take a look at the perks. For muzzles we have Accurized Ballistics, Field Choke, and finally Aggressive Ballistics. Despite all the changes to hand cannons, range, and accuracy, Aggressive Ballistics is still the go-to choice for me. The main thing that I enjoy about it is the easy to control recoil. Looking at this comparison, aggressive ballistics doesn't pull nearly as far to the right as the other muzzles. This makes landing follow-up shots much easier since you aren't having to correct for that heavy pull. It should be noted that the biggest direct change to Hawkmoon was its range being reduced by 20 in the 2.1 patch. A lot of the community is trying to maximize that range stat with the muzzles to get a little bit more aim assistance and less damage fall off. In practice though, I found aggressive ballistics to give more consistent results in both PvP and PvE. Plus, you get a small damage boost, which can make a huge difference in PvP. Moving on to the first perk, we have Luck in the Chamber. One random bullet in the magazine causes considerable bonus damage. This perk has always been a staple of the weapon and makes two-tapping people in PvP a possibility. I have nothing bad to say about this perk. For the stat mod perks, we have Hammer Forged, Improved Range and Accuracy, Quick Draw, and finally, Speed Reload. Sadly, due to all the changes hand cannons have received and the specific nerfs Hawkmoon has received, the only choice is Hammer Forged. You absolutely need the increased range and accuracy from that perk for the weapon to function on the level you expect from a hand cannon. I would love to recommend using one of the other perks since Speed Reload does help a bunch with that reload speed. But as it stands, the range on this gun has absolutely been neutered. Moving on to the final perk, we have Holding Aces. Two more random bullets in your magazine deal considerable bonus damage. This perk will also increase the magazine size from 11 to 13, but doesn't show that in the perk or in the inspection menu. This perk sadly got nerfed in 2.0 and then again in 2.1. Long story short, the Holding Aces magic bullets will not stack with Luck in the Chamber round to create a magic one-hit scenario in PvP, which is fine. The magic bullets in this perk did get reduced from 1.3 times to 1.2 times. It still means you can two-tap people in the Crucible, but are less likely to do so if they have an overshield on now. Less damage is okay from a PvP standpoint, but it was one of the defining things that made this gun worthy of its exotic slot in PvE. Speaking of that, let's get in the PvE section. A brief warning, I'm starting this off with a rant, so here we go. In the 2.0 Taken King patch, hand cannons went through a rebalancing where their accuracy and ammo capacity was changed since they outperformed scout rifles. Since then, the accuracy change has been undone, and right now hand cannons as a whole are in a really good spot for shooting things at range. This is fine, as a hand cannon will outperform a scout in medium range now, as it should be. However, there's still one festering wound from this patch that needs to be remedied, and that's the nerf to hand cannon ammo. All hand cannons, aside from the exotic ones, had their base magazine size reduced, and all hand cannons had their reserve ammo reduced. This was done to further increase the gap between scouts and hand cannons in PvE. As of this review now though, chances are if you're using a hand cannon in PvE, you're going to run out of ammo. Well, not necessarily completely run out of ammo, but you are going to be down to your last magazine a lot. When running this daily mission, I would often get down to my last few shots before finally getting a primary ammo brick. This is a problem for almost every single hand cannon though, with First Curse being the only real exception out there since it has extremely efficient ammo management built into all of the perks. In my opinion, this is something that Bungie really needs to take another look at so hand cannons can once again be a viable option. The way it is now, you can get by with them if you're using them in a strike, but if you get in a fight where you aren't moving around a lot or there aren't a bunch of ads that you can farm ammo off of, you will absolutely run out of ammo in your primary weapon. So aside from the ammo concerns, Hawkmoon is actually in an okay place. It won't be hitting things at an extreme range like it once was though. The combination of a hand can with aggressive ballistics and a 13 round magazine and 3 rounds that do bonus damage will create a fantastic weapon for those medium range encounters. It still is a wonderful weapon for running around strikes, patrol, daily missions, etc. If the ammo reserves are ever changed then you will honestly have a great primary weapon to use since its damage is fantastic for taking out beefier mobs and the reload time is still in a nice middle of the pack amongst all hand cannons. Moving over to PvP now, Hawkmoon is no longer one of the kings of the mountain as far as hand cannons go. The range nerf directly affected its accuracy, and it's just not in a good place. You will be hard pressed to use this weapon at its maximum fire rate in medium range situations since the accuracy is just unpredictable at times. 
Shots that should be headshots register as body shots, and some shots just don't even land. It's a shame, because Hawkmoon still has that amazing ability to two-tap people, you just have to really take your time with aiming. The main problem I have with this hand cannon right now is that since you have to slow down your firing to really make your shots count, you might as well be using the first curse since you will absolutely land your shots with that hand cannon's major range and accuracy. My once beloved Hawkmoon is a shadow of its former self for PvP. You really just need to take your time with your shots and be patient. If you end up firing too quickly, the bloom of the weapon will make your shots a bit more unpredictable, and you'll probably die. But slowing down and using this gun can still be a rewarding experience. The fast-paced nature of the Crucible right now, though, just doesn't make that easy. For cosmetics, Hawkmoon fortunately has always been in a good place. With the 2.0 weapon changes, every magic bullet now has a sound played with it, so you can count them. It goes well with the punchy sound of the weapon. So Hawkmoon used to absolutely be my favorite weapon. In year one, it literally did everything you wanted a weapon to do. High damage, accurate at all ranges, decent reloading, and easy to control recoil. It still has pretty much all of that as well, just minus the high range and accuracy. There is a reason Datto said the answer is always Hawkmoon. It's because it was kind of the best at everything. So upon reflection, I can completely understand the changes it has received. It's no longer a god upon the mountaintop, and no exotic right now really is. It's been brought down to the mortal plane. However, just because I understand the changes this weapon has received doesn't mean I'm entirely happy with its current state. I really feel like if the reserve ammo situation was addressed and the inconsistencies with the accuracy are fixed, then we'll have a weapon that's at least back in the spot of a must-have exotic. Not to the point that it completely outshines everything else in the competition, but something that at least warrants the exotic slot that it takes up. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. And to all the Xbox players, I really am sorry you guys never got to experience this gun in its unbridled glory. What you have now just feels like an imitation. This has been Patrick Casey with Planet Destiny, your guide to the Destiny universe.